the JAMA Network. I'm Leonard Becarrier. I'm a pediatric allergy and asthma physician, a professor of pediatrics and medicine at Washington University School of Medicine and St. Louis Children's Hospital in St. Louis, Missouri. Given the substantial morbidity associated with repeated lower respiratory tract illnesses in young children and the incomplete responses to a variety of therapeutic challenges and, and approaches that have been studied in the past, we felt it was important to explore additional treatment approaches in an effort to minimize the morbidity associated with these illnesses in this challenging population. We studied the value of the use of azithromycin or placebo initiated at the earliest signs of a respiratory tract illness in children 12 to 71 months of age who had experienced recurrent severe episodes of low respiratory tract illness in the past year. Our goal was to try to reduce the progression of these episodes to severe illnesses that would require prednisone and also to try to reduce the burden of disease symptomatology during these episodes. Furthermore, it was important for us to understand any adverse effects that might accompany this approach. We study children 12 to 71 months of age with recurrent severe low respiratory tract illnesses in the past year. We conducted this study as part of the NHLBI's ASMANET, which included nine main clinical centers across the United States. These centers screened and ultimately randomized 607 children to either azithromycin or placebo. Children had these medications available at home and parents were guided by an individualized action plan that told them which early symptoms of an illness would be their starting point for initiation of therapy. Therapy was then initiated at that point at home and was continued for five days. The children were enrolled in the study and may, were followed for up to 18 months or four respiratory tract illnesses or until they experienced one severe low respiratory tract illness at which point their, their study participation came to an end. So our primary outcome was the proportion of episodes that led to severe low respiratory tract illness that would have led to a prescription of oral steroids. And we found about a 35% reduction in the risk of having such an episode among children who received azithromycin early in the illness compared to those who received placebo. We felt that this was a clinically and statistically meaningful extent of uh, reduction in episode progression. We also found that when episodes did occur and were severe, those treated with azithromycin had significantly less severe symptomatology based on their symptom burden during the illness. We also examined for downsides of this therapy and given its antibiotic nature, the emergence of uh, resistant organisms was a concern. We studied throat swabs from a subset of children before and after the study and found that there was a numerical increase in the number of children who had azithromycin resistant organisms within their oropharynx, but uh, the numbers of these studies were small and uh, these conclusions are still preliminary. The addition of azithromycin at the early signs provided a substantial proportion of children with less severe episodes and thus provided a clinically meaningful uh, effect for these uh, children for whom prior therapies may or may not have been effective. We need to explore further and in larger numbers the real impact of the development of antibiotic resistance with this strategy because while it is effective in reducing symptom burden, we do need to balance that with the effect of antibiotic resistance emergence, both on an individual patient level and at a community level. So that will require further study. The other major question that remains unanswered is how this therapy compares to other therapies which are currently in use for this um, condition, such as daily or as needed inhaled steroids um, during these episodes. And we would like to study how to uh, directly compare these approaches to determine which may work the best and in which children an individual therapy might be most appropriate.